All right, fellas. I just want to go over a quick little bit with the flight and Star Citizen. Not that I'm going to be listening to or anything, but because it's becoming a big deal, I guess people are making more videos about it. Basically, you have a couple of sides to this. Some people like the old mode. Some people like want combat to be a lot slower. Some people want to be a lot faster. All of that, and they're looking at fighters for the main gist of this. The first point is, the game is not just a fighter game. All right, They've said a long time ago, a few times, I think, if I'm recalling correctly, that they're making like those World War II warship battle games in space. All of those games, the ships themselves aren't able to just run over every other ship. I mean, there's some ships that can do better than others, but you have like submarines that would pop up next to bigger capital ships and not be able to get hit because the capital ships couldn't arc their weapons down fast enough or, or low enough to actually hit them. Weird things like that. Fighters were like strategic tools that used in those games, not necessarily a one-shot win, kill everything thing. You had fighters and a few bombers and your aircraft carriers would kind of send them out and try and get like sporadic hits on people and stuff. Wasn't like the only thing that you needed to to win in those games um, slowing the combat speeds down you know which they've already did you know with master mode stuff nav mode and everything else but people are wanting to get rid of nav mode and then slow everything the way down and they're th saying that they can increase the uh, quantum distance or uh, speed or how how close you can get in quantum the thing is, is that quantum is limiting because it's not a consistent way to travel. And in the future, it's going to be a lot more important to have people that can travel long distances without quantum. That's basically the whole point of the game, because if you're limiting everybody down to quantum distances, then essentially nothing's ever like going to be used besides like POIs or you're going to be quantum jumping everywhere fuel scoops become basically pointless because you're not going to be out for long distances on a planet surface using your quantum fuel because it would take you forever right now with the aquila for instance i traveled from you know one side of damar to the other side of damar so that is you know half of the distance 600 kilometers through space to increase my speed in the Aquila took like 20 30 minutes all right so that means bigger planets that are like twice as big as that is gonna take an hour plus and Damar is not the biggest planet by far all right and in the future when you're trying to travel distances for exploration or salvage or mining all of these different kinds of loops scouting when it comes to like military ships fighters because you're going to need to scout around your fleet search out people um go in stealthily to get rid of some targets you're talking about like hours of flight time that you'd have to do if you don't have um you know these quantum points otherwise you're going to randomly quantum over your target pop up in the middle of a bunch of defenses and get destroyed in like five seconds. All right. It's not something that is consistent enough to be able to use tactically. I don't believe when it comes to scouting and other applications that are going to come to the game. So I don't really see a massive point in getting rid of nav mode, but you can't just simply increase all the speeds and get rid of nav mode because you run into the same problems you had before where fighters and stuff run over everything especially uh, lower tier players which is a big point of the game because increasing TTK you know you could say is is more casual friendly but if weapons and stuff get to a point where they're upgradable then eventually you'll end up in, into the same old sniper debate when it comes to first person shooters people increase the TTK in first person shooters because they want to like allow people more time to to shoot and you know become better at the game and then players will just drift over to one shot weapons because it lowers the TTK better it, it makes one shot weapons 
way more viable because there's no point in using 16 bullets to kill somebody when you can use one bullet to kill somebody at a much larger distance. So they have to balance all of the weapons, all of the upgrades that you could potentially get to those weapons and stuff for, for the higher TTKs. But also when it comes to like making fighters and stuff to where you can be a top one percenter like uh, some other streamer people say on this game. I get that they come from competitive games, all right? And everybody who comes from a competitive game or is like a super hardcore like World of Warcraft player or whatever, they want more and more challenges, more and more like top tier high end octane fighting, all right? But no matter what competitive game you actually play at, no matter how much people train, there's only ever going to be a small portion that are the 1%. So right now, you, I mean, you have a few people that would consider themselves the top 1% of dogfighters in Star, Star Citizen, all right? Even if you were able to give all the tools in the world to every single player in the game, there's still not going to be a rapid increase to the top 1% because there's still, it's only going to be the top 1% that's the top 1%. It's, there's, it doesn't matter what game you play. There's not competitive, like League of Legends... There's there's millions of people that have played it. All right, I played League of Legends uh, competitively with esports in college. All right, it doesn't really necessarily matter how much you train in that game. You're not just going to become faker overnight. You can get up to a high level, but it, it's going to take a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of practice and also time and knowledge and training and skill and everything else you could think of even cheese to try and get up to those high-end levels and then keep yourself at those high-end levels for a long period of time and those high-end players can literally just go in and just run over everyone else in every single rank of the game all right so you're talking about the top one percent versus the 99 percent the difference is league of legends is a competitive game where people know what they're getting into, and that toxicity breeds, you know, the game's uh, basically longevity because it's a game that is both challenging but also sort of respects your time because you kind of go in, you can play it for like 30 minutes. It, you know, if you're, you know, more casual games, like 45 minutes. If you're doing a super competitive game, it's like 20 minutes. So it's something that if you get better at, you get more condensed games and you get more games in the day and it ends up allowing you to play more of the game that you like but in a game like star citizen or something it's not going to condense how many games you play or how many games other people get to play it's going to strip away all of the time that they put into the game and force them into a point where they just can't they can't play anymore and this has happened with survival game after survival game that I've ever played, okay, because I've played a number of games for the last 30 years, all right, I've been in games for a long time, I've played every kind of game you can imagine for the most part, um, except for like when I lost my taste for some of them over the years, and like survival games are basically the closest thing that I can put to Star Citizen, um, just for like a reference point, you know, even though people will say that it's not a survival game, in, in my mind, Space simulation, you have weather conditions, radiation, food, water, air, uh, you know, armor durabilities and all that stuff coming, ship part durabilities, everything else. It's it's basically a survival game to me, base building. Uh, and all those games, you have the more casual players that make up the good portion of the player base in the map. And then you have really hardcore pvp guys or like raiders that only want to kill or raid and they end up killing off the entire server because they consistently play until there's nobody left to raid and then they leave so they'll go into a server and kill off everybody in the whole entire server until there's nothing left for them to do and then they'll leave or you have like people where i ended up coming in in those games was that I would end up having to team up with like four or five other people making like one small elite group and then trying to protect every single person on that server which was a massive pain because we had to go over there and fight these mega tribes 24 7 put in 
40 hours, like, you'd be online, like, 18, 20 hours, you know, just sitting there trying to, like, get rid of their, their equipment and, and all that stuff, which, yes, it does give you something to do, but it also is a huge pain in the rear, so it's not necessarily something that I want to deal with personally forever, and Star Citizen, to me, like, the more I've been playing it, the more that, like, Master Modes have came in and things like that, it feels a lot more like... Not necessarily like a like a competitive survival game or like a competitive shooter or anything like that. It feels a lot more like, say, Fallout or something at this point. And when it comes to Fallout, for instance, you can imagine playing like Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas. And you have all these possibilities, all these places to explore and and, and try to like find quests and just see the world, immerse yourself in it. You have all these build ideas that you can do, all these weapons that you can try all that good stuff, all right, that makes, like, a game like Fallout work, you know, it makes it good, but then you end up adding in really hardcore competitive PvP players in that situation, and it'll end up getting to a point where only the top 1% can enjoy the majority of the game, all the best spots, everything else will be taken over by the top 1%, normal players are not going to be able to play the way that they want, they're going to be killed off and trapped in the in the starting areas. The um, they're not going to be able to try the builds that they want to build. They're going to be forced to try and adapt meta builds to deal with meta players, and then they're still not going to be as good as meta players because they just don't have the ability to play at those levels. So you can't necessarily take all of the joy out of the game, all the experience I could possibly have in Star Citizen. And then strip it away just to have a higher competitive player base. When you can have just as much competitive edge to some degree with um, just massive org structures and logistics, training, everything else that you have that you could have over the edge of another person. But it also has a downside from like um, operating costs and all of that. A lot of organization that has to go into having a massive org. It, it isn't necessarily going to be profitable for someone to have giant javelin fleets and then go hunt down all these new players and stuff compared to having a, a you know a hundred dollar fighter and then being the best fighter pilot in the world and being able to go around and kill every single person and every single base and every single ship out in space and that's just the simple nature of it is you have to have some sort of trade-off when it comes to this competitive edge and it's not just going to be in the fighters' hands. Like, the fighters will be important, but they're tactical tools that are being used for certain situations. They're not a one-shop answer for every situation that would be in the game. Just like in World War II, I mean, fighters and stuff were probably very important, I'm sure. All right, Air dominance and all that on the battlefield. You can't really, you know, explain away fighters and bombers and, and all of that stuff. But you're not just sending millions of fighters and bombers over and destroying every single warship that everyone else has there's a there's a point that warships have in those in in war and in games in general and that's i'm figuring that's what's happening with star Citizen at some point that's where the armor system comes in and all of this stuff that's coming down the pipeline it's going to make fighters worse so you could try to be the best fighter pilot going up against other fighters that's potentially okay, but you're not going to be the best fighter pilot destroying javelins and stuff. So you're still going to end up raging at some point, no matter what you try, unless you start adapting more strategies to deal with those ships in general. Um, I feel like there was something else I was going to say, but I kind of forgot what it was. So that's probably the gist of everything that I would put into this video for the most part. Um, I feel like there was there was like one other thing that was on my mind that I just can't think of at the moment. Hmm. But yeah, I'll hop off. If I think of it later, I'll try and like redo something. But y'all guys have a good one, and uh, I'll pop back on here in a minute. Gotta get ready for work.